Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out Al's incredible custom reef tank. All right, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reef. And today we're actually gonna start a little bit of a two week special because this week I had the opportunity to go visit a good reefing buddy of mine Al in Melbourne, he's the owner of Lifestyle Aquariums and Reptiles up in Bandura, and he is one of the few local fish store owners that also has a cracking reef tank in his home, and uh, the man is just one of the nicest guys in reefing. In fact, he's one of the nicest guys, full stop. Add to the fact that he's a reefer and it just makes him extra, extra awesome. I had the opportunity to visit Al a couple of years ago, and his tank looked incredible then, but as you and I both well know, two years is a very long time in reefing. So when I got the opportunity or the invite more to the point to go back and see Al's tank for a second time, two years down the track, I could not pass it up. And I can assure you, you're not gonna be disappointed with the footage either. So uh, without any further ado, let's roll the footage of Al's custom reef. All right, here we are. I am at Al's place for a second time. It's been a couple of years and this yep. tank has absolutely exploded. But first of all, Al, thank you so much for making your time available and welcoming me into your home to see this absolutely gorgeous tank. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> I'm super excited to get an update on this tank. And to be honest, I know in reefing, two years is a long time and a lot changes, but this looks like a completely new tank. It's, <laughs> it's got so much going on there. So I'm really excited to see where this video goes. Firstly, let's start with the basics. Can you tell us the dimensions of this beautiful custom built tank? Hey Sam, thanks for coming again and yeah. So eight by two and a half by two and a half. Yes. Seven foot sump, as I mentioned in the previous video. Um, to be honest, I don't have too much time to spend in this <laughs> beautiful reef because as you know, you, I just run my business as well. You run lifestyle aquariums in yes. Bandura, which will be next week's video for those of you who are keen to see what Al does for his, uh, for his work and for his business. We'll check out that shop next weekend. But um, yeah, it's incredible because I know, I, I'm fortunate enough to know quite a few store owners and um, not that many of them will run reef tanks at home because they're surrounded yeah. by them all day. And to see one this big and this beautiful is a, a testament to your, um, your, your dedication to the hobby, I guess. Yeah, so obviously you wanna enjoy your own tank and you wanna feel a fish tank like it's yours, you know? Yes. I had a 14 years old tank Yes. Uh, in the shop and that was beautiful, very established, but I feel that the tank become more like a display. Yes. And I didn't feel that the, the tank was mine anymore. Sure, yep. So yep. that's why I say, nah, I want to build this one. <laughs> I want to do it more automatic and... Yes. Uh, well, yes. It's a great opportunity to really um, test some of the methodologies and equipment that you're, exactly. you're selling to your customers. And then yep. you can hold your hand on your heart and say, this is what I use in my own personal reef exactly tank. Exactly right. It doesn't come with a stronger And it's more like that. a challenge yes. just to try different products and what works better. And exactly. With this tank, I did, if you probably see the previous video, sure. how much the corals they just been growing. Oh. Like for example, the stack horn, in the previous video, I couldn't believe how small <laughs> we just started. And then just after two years, and I just say, uh, breaks a few times and you find pieces on the floor and on the <laughs> sand, just bring it um, back to the shop and, you know, yeah. give it a new home or, or, or whatever. But yeah, Abs really, absolutely. really nice uh, growth in the, especially SPS. Now, coloration. It's been about two years since I was here last, but you'll yep. have to remind me at this point in time, how long has this tank been running for now? So to be exact, is it been six years? Six years, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, hence why it looks so established. It's um, six years and still, uh, it looks incredible. I mean, we'll go over all of the um, corals and fish and some of the um, exciting things, some of the challenges and stuff you've gone through shortly, but um, just to refresh our memories, and in, yep. also in case there's been any changes in the last couple of years, yep. can you run us through some of the equipment? Oh, the 100%. Setup? So got this. we still got, I love Radiant, so I got few mix in there of yeah, Radiant. Yeah. So we got Gen 5s, 
with your Gen 4s. They're probably one of my favorites. Yes. Uh, compared with the new uh, uh, version. Yes. I got in here more Gen 4s, Gen 5s, Gen 6s. Yes. <laughs> A huge collection. I need to already. check why the Gen 6 is not uh, <laughs> on. It's not turned on. No, normally we turn on the lights at 3 o'clock, but yes. we film in an early video. Exactly, yeah. Um, so we'll keep that in mind, both for the lights that haven't turned on yet. I mean, you've got no shortage of radians up there. If we count them all up, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six thirties and a 15 up there, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no shortage of light there. So you can't even tell that the uh, Gen 6 isn't on. But yes, just to uh, reiterate to the viewers there, at we the are bottom, here fairly early in the morning. At the bottom, I'm really, I like simple. Yes. Big Sam with a big refugium running the Kessel H80. Yes. Grow the microalgae, just incredible to re remove all your um, so nitrate and phosphate organics. and yeah, everything. Yeah. And obviously produce uh, your own population of uh, Amphipods, copy pods, for everything. Sure, for sure. Biggest Nile skimmer. Yeah, you're a big advocate keep, of the Nile skimmer. Yeah, You've had great keep success. Up and running since yeah day one. So yeah, six, six years. years old and still and producing is, the goods. Yeah, no worries. I had the CO2 um, scrubber. S scrubber on it. Yep, to keep yep. the pH up. Yes. I run bio pellet reactor. Yeah, right, right. I probably need to top it up. <laughs> Not many are running the bio pellets anymore. You obviously have good results with them. Yeah, so I start since I start riffing probably, I will say 15 years properly. Sure, yes. Um, bio pellets. I, I always right done it with spot. that, yeah. so I have to get used to it. <laughs> yes. I run in here carbon and phosphate miners for yes. an aquaforest. Yes. We got the uh, KH Keeper. Yes. Apex controller. Dosing pumps, battery backups, yeah, nice, uh, nice. automatic water changes that I run it behind uh, in the garage. Yes. So we run in the two Versa pumps. Yes, yes. Um, I run my chiller from upside as well. Yes. Um, we run in at the moment five MP40s. Yes. I think that give enough water movement. <laughs> Um, I mean, this ch tank has two visible, I mean, the two yes. large panels are the viewable panels. So it's dividing two rooms, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's effectively a peninsula dividing the two rooms here, which yeah. peninsulas are always tricky on flow. We got the uh, reef uh, wave 45. Okay, yep, yeah, yep. So the Red Sea gyre. Red Sea, yep. yep. Um, external weir. Yes. And my whiskey collection is still here. <laughs> Few bottles already gone. <laughs> well, there's no use having a collection if you can't uh, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, here, I normally just keep my uh, arrow water unit. Yeah, nice. Built All in there. All my food, test kits, uh, power supplies, everything. Yes, yes. So I try to keep it as neat as possible. Need tidy because, I mean, as you say, this is dividing two rooms. We've got. Um, two living areas divided by this uh, beautiful roof tank and you've got to keep it nice and tidy to uh, appease all members of a family of course and um, you've done that beautifully with this custom cabinetry which looks an mm. absolute treat. Now they did a really good job. I'm really happy with the finish that we did in this tank and then yeah we got a few surprises at the shop as well. Yes. New display uh, going on. Yes great. So yeah, yeah, we'll we sure. set up a really nice one that obviously Sam gonna show you, you bet. in the yeah, next we'll, one. We'll catch that video. <laughs> next weekend's video but um, I should point out I mean it, I say I'm surprised at the quality of this build however this is not something that you've never done before. I mean, in your business, this is yeah. one of the specialties that you guys exactly do. Exactly right. You, you build custom tanks for businesses, yep. for hotels, for restaurants, yep. and you build them to this standard of, of quality. So, I mean, I, I, it's probably not something you do every day, but you're definitely no stranger to a high-end reef tank. No, and, as, uh, as I mentioned before, yeah, we done the Maccas that you mentioned in yes. the previous video as well. Uh, in Elfen, if someone want to go and have a look, it's a really nice uh, 
reef tank in there. Yes. With a mixed reef and the owner look after the tank. So is the owner and me the, yes. the only people that put the hands in there? Excellent. Um, yeah, a few commercial um, so waiting well. rooms and yes, all yes. that sort of Plus, stuff. Plus, I mean, like I said, we will check out your business shortly, but um, you obviously have a, a long list of customers as well that you assist yeah. and guide and, yeah. and recommend through. So being able to take all of that knowledge that you've gained with your customers, be it residential or commercial, and, and bring that into a tank like this is, um, yeah. is incredible. So And back to back to, yeah, finish work, come back home and keep working. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously enjoy it. It's more the enjoyment that the, the work that I put in this tank. Yes, yes. Just make a coffee, cup of coffee, and clean the glass and sit down here, enjoy. Yes. Weekend sometimes I just put a little bit of whiskey, enjoy, <laughs> that's it. Just enjoy. Well, we can't go any further without taking a closer look at what's inside the glass box yep. because, I mean, there's a lot to cover there and we can't afford to have this video go for two hours because <laughs> we've, got, we've got lots to do. So let's have a look at what we've got in the tank. Maybe we should start with the fish because you've got some big beautiful fish in this system. Can you run us through some of the fish that you're housing in there and tell us yeah, a bit about them? Of course. So I love always one of my favorite fish is a lipstick tank. Yes. So I always want to have a couple. Yes. So I got the male here with the long tail. Yeah, beautiful. Female is a short tail. Yes. But you can tell the difference. Definitely. Um, I had them probably a year ago. Okay. And they settled in really well yeah, in the tank. Yeah. So they I, are still nice and chubby and... I am surprised that you're able to have a pair in there. I did think that they would maybe have a bit of argy-bargy there. Yeah, if you add two females, it's even easier yes, to do okay. it. Yep. Male and female, sometimes they even try to fight yeah, each wow, other. Wow. But did work for me really well. Yeah, so. amazing. Amazing. One of those things that, yeah, can work. Might not work, but uh, thankfully for your yeah. case, it has worked a treat. And as you say, these two are both big, healthy, chunky fish. Yeah, they're probably around 30 plus centimeters yeah. each fish. Yeah. Big, big fish, and they're looking absolute treat. Now, I've noticed some other stunning fish in there. What else have you got in there, Al? A few yellow tanks. Yeah. So <laughs> I know a lot of people chasing them around and paying a big money for it. I mean, people would pay big money but, for these ones because these are absolutely stunning specimens. Really vivid, strong And they colors. always yeah, go well together as well. They never been fighting or... Yeah, yep. Yeah. We have a unicorn tank. Um, yeah, he's a stunner. Yeah. In the other side, I think he scratched itself with the, the eye with one of the acros. Okay. <laughs> because that's when I found these uh, big uh, stack corn. Yes on the sand because he broke from here. But yeah, I'm really okay. sure he scratched it with the, yeah, yeah, the looks body like he's or healing something. up okay. He's, yep. He, he doesn't seem to be harmed at all. I got three pyramid butterflies. I do love the pyramid butterflies. I mean, one of the few reef safe butterflies out there and um, you could not really ask for much more striking colors or patterns on them. That yep. um, dark face with the, the bright yellow and the white in there, it's as contrasty as it gets. And the fact that you can have a small school of them like you have here, three in the one tank, is, yep. um, is super awesome. They normally go well in schooling. Yes. They normally like it. When people put one, they become more like shy and yes. hide a lot. I believe in the wild they are a, a schooling fish. Yes. It's just, you know, obviously in the wide wild, they've got a little bit, <laughs> got a pretty yeah. big swim space and um, they have a school of, you know, 40, 50, 60 or hundreds <laughs> together. Yeah. But um, being able to see three of them swim together in here is super, super cool. Yeah. So I got a few anthias, just this part anthias. Yes. Uh, crummies. Big self in tank is still here. This big self is a monster. We'll see I need he's... to keep feeding it a lot because <laughs> if I'm too busy and I forget to give extra food, yes. you start getting a bit skinny, but yeah, okay. I can put it back and I mean, shove you it say in. You say you've got to keep feeding him. I imagine he'd take a decent chunk of food. I can probably check some food. <laughs> he's, he's a pretty solid show leader. everyone is. Yeah, he loves a lot of uh, seaweed stream from Haikari. Beautiful. All the fish love it. Put a little bit in there. <laughs> Not too much. Just a, just a kilogram <laughs> worth, you know. 
Yes, that definitely gets them uh, motivated, that's for sure. And yeah, the big sailfin, despite being such a uh, big fish, and these, these are a relatively small pallet, he's, he's going after them, isn't he? <laughs> he's, yeah. He's a busy unit. Uh, what else I got? We got a Chevron tank somewhere. Yeah, okay. He was here around before. He's yeah, chasing after some eating food. at the back. He's, He's on the other side. We'll, we'll jump over the other side in a minute and have a look from the other angle, which is just a pretty unique uh, benefit of this tank. Powder blue tank. Yeah, powder blue. Difficult fish to keep. Very, um, very difficult. Very sensitive to white spot. Yes. But he had white spot uh, maybe once or twice when the tank was very new yes but yeah always work for me uh, reef safe medic yes fix it up that's it beautiful beautiful one yeah uh, give it a good food just mix it up food with garlic and vitamins so if they're eating well they are strong enough to survive you know that's probably helped him in this instance as well is they can i mean i always say powder tanks can go sort of almost one of two ways they either get disease and, and struggle to recover from it. Yep. But if they do recover from it, they can quickly take over and dominate the tank. Exactly. Yep. But in this system here, I mean, he's probably less than half the size, probably closer to a third of the size of some fish like that sailfin or even yep. the um, lipsticks in there. So it probably just keeps his anger at bay. <laughs> he wouldn't want to yep. go too hard against um, yeah, some of the big fish. Blue tank as well yeah the iconic blue tank um, looks great i like rasses they're hiding at the moment yes. but we got the possum ras beautiful yeah good fish to keep a under control pest and, yes yes you know flat worms they beautiful can as well yeah. they're gorgeous but very very shy yeah, fish exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, mandarin fish one yes. of my favorite fish i got the spotted one yes yep it's nice. hiding in there somewhere as well and what a, i mean a six year established system <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. gonna, and you've got to refuse him in there. He's going to have an absolute feast of pods to just thrive on as well. So yeah, an ideal situation for him. Even though the tank is very, very established, I normally put every week, I try to add more live copy pods. Yes. That we always keep them at the store. Yes. Every Saturdays so yep. after 11 a.m., we get it from Chris. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, nice local supplier, freshly yep. bottled that day. And then, yeah, if... That's the best way to keep established tank. Yeah. Copy pots, they're good for your tank. Absolutely. Phytoplankton for your corals. Yes. Um, yeah, so. Fantastic, fantastic. And you were discussing briefly before the Chromis, you've, you've not experienced, I mean, like yeah. myself, you've not had die off of Chromis. A lot of people, they just say, oh, but they kill each other and they don't last. So, as I mentioned in the previous video, yes. in six years, I, that was the first thing I ate yes. in the tank. So, I mentioned that I put 11 chromies. Yes. I start and cycle the tank with the chromies and everything. Yes. Uh, at the moment, I still got nine. Yeah, so, yeah. only two disappear in, in six, six years. years. Yeah. I never found bodies or anything. No. <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah, still, still nine in there. I mean, over six years, that's a... It's not a bad uh, retention rate at all. And, and your theory as to why that is, just you think good numbers of them or good size tank or? Um, I reckon just just put as many as you want yes. at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. From the same batch, yes. you know? Yes. The problem is you add two and then two weeks later add oh, another sure. two. Yeah, they just, they try to fight because yeah. they, but if you add them little and then add them at the same time, yes, I reckon that's the key. Definitely. Although, as you say, despite being small, they are a pretty territorial fish. So yeah, yeah, you want to get them all in establishing that territory at the same so time. Dental family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Clown fish. Yeah, possum rats just oh, swim we'll past see the. See if we can spot him. He went under. Uh, I can see the mandarin though. He's yeah, just down there, and yeah, pretty <laughs> pretty chunky unit, that's for sure. No shortage of pads uh, of pods in there, keeping that belly nice and full. Yeah, the only one went behind, but yeah, that was too quick. <laughs> that's a <laughs> big lipstick comes out of there when you're looking for a tiny little possum rest. Yeah, Beautiful. so upside as well. I'm running TK Chiller, yes, the 2000, yes. Uh, automatic water changes, and I obviously ran a big UV light sterilizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that helped with 
parasites and you know of white course. spot and of course yeah yeah wow that's a that's a pretty incredible lineup of fish i mean to be fair except for maybe the possum rest there's nothing super super exotic in there it's not there's no fish that you only see, you know, once in a lifetime, yeah, despite owning a uh, local fish shop. Yeah. Where, and I mean, for those who don't already follow you guys on social media, you've got to jump on the uh, Lifestyle Aquarium page on Facebook because you guys share some of the incredible stock you get there. And you guys do get incredibly rare and beautiful, both marine and freshwater fish that yep. come in there. And, and yeah, I know I've mentioned a few, we will check that out in the next video, but uh, <laughs> it is nice to see that you do reserve those for your customers. You don't just cherry pick the best stuff and bring it no, home. No, no, no. And I normally, I, I leave the first pick to yes. customers. Yes. If I see that the stuff that I like is still at, this, at the shop in week, week and a half. Yes. Bad luck <laughs> coming with me, but You're yeah, I'm really, really good with that. I, yeah. I, I now I'm building a big collection of dash corals. Yes, that you will see at the shop. And yes, they're gonna be in the new display. And Beautiful. Yeah, bits and pieces. I mean, it makes I mean, something different. It, it would be difficult, but um, it makes good business sense. I mean, you can't cherry pick, pick all the good stuff. You, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. You're running a business, not a um, not it's, just access. Especially to we got them. um a good group of uh, customers and yes. they become more like your friends and Absolutely. family. Absolutely. Um, they help me to unpack and everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's hard to say now. That's the sort of culture you're looking for at a local fish shop where, yeah, you can really get in there and get yeah. access to these things as they're coming out of the box. And yeah. you've got staff like yourself and your amazing team that are there to help with any questions, but also track down those items that they, you know, the the dream coral or fish they're looking to add into their tank, which is pretty cool. But I, I did want to say, despite not having any super rare fish in here, I mean, well, I say that as I can see two yellow tanks on the screen. And the chevron tank that is <laughs> chevron, probably. Yeah, yeah, true. Chevron's fairly rare, but he, he's hiding for the moment. But um, the, despite that, always oh, he Possum res again. <laughs> is right there. Yeah, just hiding there in the shadows. You can see his silhouette as he swims up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fish list in here still looks incredible. I mean, you've got so much movement, so much, um, so much color, so much big fish in there. It just has a huge, huge presence. And um, it, I just think it's a testament of sometimes the most expensive fish aren't the most beautiful. Sometimes it's the yeah. fish that uh, sometimes we'll turn our nose up at because they're cheap or they're common. You see them every week. Things like a sailfin. Um, not an expensive fish and just about every local Stunning. fish store in the country yeah. has one or two in stock at any given time. Yeah. And I, I would hazard a guess that he is almost the showpiece fish of this tank. Such a big yeah. presence of him. And likewise, the lipsticks. I mean, a pair of these guys swimming around. The male-female duo just look incredible. They're a fish I always have a soft spot for. And seeing big, healthy specimens like this coexist is... Just yeah. um, an absolute pleasure. So you've done an incredible job there with oh, your fish. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, that's what I did want to do it. Just um, something that everyone can have. Yeah. yeah. And it's still affordable, you yes, know? Yes, SPS. We're we, lucky. We're lucky in we this We're very lucky in <laughs> Australia because we got the best SPS and they're not expensive, not expensive at all. Not expensive at all, no. And then everything you see here is affordable for anyone to yeah. build a reef tank. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah, well, speaking of SBS and other corals in the tank, can you take us through some of the corals you've got in here? Yeah, I know there's a lot, but... Um... So, I'm really... Um, so, my SPS, probably the... My favorite type of SPS is um, stack horns. Yes. So, I always like Dallas coral, blue yeah, stack. Yeah. I had a red one at the wow. back somewhere. So, we got few bird nets, different colors here. So... As I mentioned to Sam before, we obviously we make mistakes as well. We can get pissed, even if people are, because you have a shop and you know what you're doing. <laughs> However, you, you can get mistakes and pests in the tank. So I didn't want to clean the wave makers or, or I'll kill Aptasia. So since I lost my copper band butterfly, I just uh, start popping some um, Aptasias. I don't know if you can see, oh, man, but like, there are few in there. Very few and far between. Um, I mean. But nothing to worry, you know? No, that's they can it. be under control. And yes. then another pest new in the tank that is probably eating few of my 
uh, bird nest yes. is the Asturina yeah, uh, yeah. You can just starfish. See Asturina there. I mean, I'll it's get the, one of the bottom of that acro as well. Yeah, there is too. Yeah, I'll get the DSLR footage on those so people can so see up close. Don't be too concerned. They're good cleaners as well. Yes. Um, they're really low chances that they can eat your corals. Yes. But they can reproduce itself really, really quick. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> the if the there are too many, they probably start affecting your corals. Sure. But you can manually remove them or you can just, if you can afford it, <laughs> you can buy a Harlequin shrimp. Yes. But they're very pricey. They normally eat um, a starfish and they're going to keep under control. Yes. But you're going to remove, you have to remove probably the good starfish too. Of because they will uh, they won't be eat them too. Which starfish they eat. But as you say, here in Australia, it's a, it's an expensive option. Yeah. Um, they are a beautiful shrimp. But, oh, um, they're stunning. Uh, and the other interesting thing with the Asturinas is, and I, I'm not speaking from any position of expertise, but just um, <laughs> my humble experience is that there's many, many variants of them. Exactly. And yeah. only a few variants do actually eat corals. So yep. sometimes you might spot one of these stars. In fact, I've got a couple of stars that look very, very similar in my soft coral tank. And yep. um, they haven't touched a thing. Now, it is a soft coral tank, but um, they don't seem to explode in numbers and they don't seem to eat anything. So I haven't gone on a tirade to remove yep. them. Unfortunately, in this instance, I mean, we, we can actually see some red hand and they're chomping into yeah, the they, Exactly. I see one in one of my favorite corals, for oh, example. Always the way. I say, oh my God, I just <laughs> jump on the ladder, remove them and then just drop it on the sand. I don't even kill them. I feel bad. Yeah? <laughs> You've got a big heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a strawberry shortcake. So yes. I try to collect. They, there's so many types. So many strawberry so shortcakes. You and can I know have I got few in there and they're mother colonies. Yes. Probably if you want to take later. Uh, I've got one of the strawberry shortcakes that I picked yeah. up from your last time. And it's uh, one of my pride pieces that's growing away beautifully. And your store always has a great selection of <laughs> yeah. strawberry shortcakes. I try always my best because it's one of my favorites. Absolutely. So I have to. Um, <laughs> I'm growing again um, uh, Walt Disney. Yes. It's right there. It started Beautiful. with a little stick again. Yeah, yeah. It's coming it's along. Coming along. Rainbow um, Millipora. Yeah, that's stunning. That's got um, some really nice color into it. The yellows, the greens, the uh, reds on the polyps. Beautiful. Yeah. Red Montes here. We got uh, Posiloporas. Beautiful. Massive, big colony oh, green. They grow so fast, those pieces. Let's start with a little tiny frag. Purple and blue Posilopora yes. at the Beautiful. back. Beautiful. Um, yeah, chalice corals. Yeah, nice, nice. Galaxy corals. I love this galaxy. I know they're a stingy bunch, but uh, this, in fact, you can see a sweeper up here. <laughs> just, yeah. Just reaching out, but uh, the color and movement on that piece is just gorgeous. Yeah, Monty Poros that they just fall down and they just <laughs> start melting just... out of nowhere. <laughs> what a beautiful contrast of the green and the red there, though. It looks a yeah. treat. And look at this galaxy here as well. What? That's a bright one there. Yep. Beautiful coloration on him. That will take over as big as this. Soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yellow tip elegance. Yes. A I lot of people that keep um, SPS tanks or mixed reef, yes. they always are scared to put so amphias, but I think that's one of my favorite things. You just need to keep under control. Yes. Don't let them just... Just grow over things. Grow yeah, everywhere, yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah, you can keep them under control and they give a beautiful color. Beautiful color. Beautiful Especially contrast. when you um, run a blue light that yes. looks even better. Yeah, they do like to pop under a blue. We got red digitatas, they're growing everywhere. <laughs> Definitely doing We got there. a pink digi in the other side. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, I got beautiful. the blue one. Yeah. I, I noticed with the elegance here, a lot of people keep their elegance on the sand. You've got yours perched up on the rock here. Yeah. And it looks if, incredible for it. If it's nothing touching the edges of the the oh, elegance yes. that will come up beautifully. Yeah, nice, nice. This one is not even open. The light, it's been on only for maybe one hour. Yes, yes. So Yeah, they take yeah. a good few hours to really start stretching out. But um, yeah, it looks, it, I, I love it just perched up there on the rock. It gives it a real presence where normally they're just sort of squirreled away on, on the sand somewhere. <laughs> yeah. and because they get so large, they kind of get pushed into a spot where you can't see them so much, where that one's just really front and center and looks great. Yeah. 
we got few hammer corals yeah really beautiful colors beautiful. in there you can make as big as, as you want and there's so many colors that you can add into a garden absolutely frog spawns they're the same family so yes. they can touch each other beautiful mm. very very nice and there's even more to see on the other side should we um, pop over there and have a look yeah. and see what corals we can see over there i'll follow you <laughs> no worries okay so we're running here like a picture frame and we're running led lights in between yes to make the tank pops even more gives it a real cool look yep. it's got this frame around it with the um, leds there just to yeah you, really give it a, a presence and um i love that you effectively have two reef tanks even though it's the same one because this is a completely different view looks completely <laughs> different yeah so that was yeah and from the time that i got here which was i mean looking at how long this video has been running for about 40 minutes ago this leather has almost doubled in size in, in that 40 minutes yeah. and, I, and i know it's still open and up. it's still no yeah 100 percent open <laughs> uh, this actually this clam yes was right under okay yep, and yep. you can see <laughs> well, the clam didn't get light yes. in the top right corner, so lose the <laughs> bleach out a little bit. So I just move it to get the color back. So Absolutely. we got a goni garden here. Yeah. Some of the gonies, they still... Um, goni life, sometimes they open, sometimes they don't when the first um, hour of lights are on. But uh, yep. ironically, then, the one the clowns are, or the, the one, two, three, four, five, six that the clowns are in, <laughs> have started to open up and um, I mean, they've picked some pretty stunning pieces there for some glitters, some pinks, some just really nice uh, gonies there. And look at them, what a beautiful pair of clowns they are. Yeah, they, I got them since very tiny, the yeah, ba nice. since babies. Uh, we got the pink digi that we mentioned before, the yes. blue one growing at the back. Yes. More gonies. More gonies. Um, and what I love about this Dallas, I mean, those who have followed my channel for a while and have saw my previous tank, I, I'm a big fan of Dallas. Though, that not... was the most incredible Dallas. <laughs> Let me say it, but yeah, that well, was massive. I was going to say, I absolutely love your Dallas because it's actually quite a fine branch. It hasn't got really thick. You can yeah. see the comparison to the, the blue stag next to it there. And that's normally the sort of thickness you'll see on a, particularly when it gets to that size. Yep. On a Dallas where yours has stayed really fine. And I, I absolutely love it for that. It gives it a real, I don't know, a real Halloween sort of feel. It looks like a spooky tree. It's got this real <laughs> twisted and fine real look and to it. And that kid branching crazy. So I normally just keep cutting it because yes. that was nearly touching each other <laughs> with the blue one. And same with the DG. Yes. So the DG is actually more aggressive. Yeah. So whatever yep. you see touching the DG, kill it. Yep. <laughs> um, we got more red monties. We red more, Monty more blue. The, the shape of the <laughs> Monty on this side, just gorgeous. The way it's got that real three tier sort of cup going on. The melting one here. <laughs> Look at from here. That's why I don't want to put anything in there because the contrast, it's really nice. To be honest, that, that a section there almost looks like an oversaturated uh, freshwater tank where they have like the moss exactly, and things growing down. Exactly, yeah. The way that's just um, flowed down there, it just looks an absolute treat. Yeah, I got a torch garden here. Uh, like we mentioned before, yes. the shape of the Dallas is just getting around the, the, <laughs> the leather to avoid to touch each other. It's, but it's they're almost, not killing each other it's, or anything. It's on the path to build almost a cage around the leather, exactly, the way it's coming yeah. up and over. And then uh, just got this nice little, they're, they're finding a way to work together. And um, so far, so good. It's, it's incredible to see. It looks just beautiful. And yeah, it, it's almost hard to believe it's the same tank. I mean, if the fish, if the fish picked a side and stayed on that side, so that you only saw one set of fish on that side and one set of fish on this side. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't believe this was the same tank because it's just a completely different view and um, it, it equally is amazing, but um, it just, yeah, it takes my breath away. It's incredible. Look at that clownfish here, the big female, beautiful uh, bullet holes on one side, the Picasso view on this side, just absolutely stunning. And seeing her gracefully swim through that Goni Yapora is just stunning. Mm -hmm. Now, Yep. Can you tell us, you mentioned that this tank's been running for six years. Yep. You run a business, you've got a family. <laughs> yeah. What sort of time and maintenance can you be spending on this beautiful tank here? Uh, not much at all. Wow. So I try, 
I used to work seven days a week. Yes. I'm not doing it anymore. Good man. I'm trying to spend more time with the family on yes. the weekends. Beautiful. So my daughter also play um, basketball. Yeah, nice. Two teams. So that <laughs> absorbed a lot of time from my wife and I. Yes. And yeah, so we just always busy, always no matter busy. what. Running the business, yeah. But yeah, it's been working amazing. And no regret. Probably if I buy a new house, yes. I will make it bigger. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, so you, you say you don't spend a lot of time maintenance on the can you yeah. run us through what say your weekly or monthly routine would so be so normally like i just run the automatic water changes yes yeah that I, was through the versa pumps just, yeah so is, have you got that set to a continual change or you're doing a, a i used amount? to have the continuum yes. but i change it now and try to do it when i'm here okay yep so maybe at night time to sure. check the levels yes make sure their calibration they're both the same yes um yeah, so I try to just do twice a week. Each day I do 100 liters water change. Okay, yep, yep. That's it. Yep. Uh, I try, I use natural soap water in this one. Yes. Uh, but at the shop I'm trying just to mix my own. Sure. To see the difference. See the difference, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But cool. this one has been always working for the past six years. Yes. Just with natural salt water. And we do have access to some beautiful natural salt water here in Australia that um, other parts of the world are not afforded. So yeah. it, it does, in my opinion, make sense a lot of the time here to, to use natural salt water. I know yeah. in some places it's not all that um, convenient if you live a long way inland or, yeah. or whatnot, or you don't have room for storage of uh, natural salt water. But if you don't fit into either of those categories, you'd be hard pressed not to go natural salt water here. Exactly. When you see the results like that, um, it's another reason to, to yeah. go for it. Um, so a couple hundred liters of water change a week, obviously cleaning the yep. glass while you're enjoying a uh, whiskey or a coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, feeding um, the fish. Just clean the schema as well once yep. a week. Yep. Um, check the old equipment that yep. is running just properly. Yep. Um, yeah, just try to go through. Obviously you need to, every day I just walk past, make sure everything is working, uh, get my step ladder and go and check on top, everything is okay. Yes. So you need to spend at least half an hour yep. daily, yep. minimum, yep. Just to keep everything. something like this. Yeah, yeah. And as you you say, cannot just forget about it no. and then, yeah. <laughs> And as you say, you can enjoy that time. I mean, that, it's that is the hobby. Um, yeah. Spending that time with the tank, you, if you can uh, enjoy it, you know, have a look at your fish and your corals while you're checking over the equipment. Yeah. That's obviously the way to go. Now, parameter wise, what sort of values are you chasing in a system like this? So normally, um, I like to keep a calcium around 440. Yes. Uh, my KH is normally around seven to 7.5. Yes. Uh, magnesium under uh, just right under 1300 um, as low as possible phosphate yes. I keep a little bit of nitrate so around five yeah, um, salinity 1.025 yep. temperature always 25 degrees yep. that's probably one of the most important things that you need to take care in the uh, SPS tanks. And that's what's going on in, a, in the wild, in the yes. Great Barrier Reef. Corals just bleaching because the variation of the, For sure. the For sure. temperature and that sort of stuff. Definitely. So, so it sounds like you're chasing pretty well a natural salt water level, uh, yeah. level. And I mean, looking at the growth you've had in this system, yeah. I, I often hear people say that you need elevated parameters for um, growth. Be yeah, before I, I use the the natural salt water, I normally test it first. Yes. And then if I need to adjust it, I adjust it with. Sure. Yes, uh, I use in here Red Sea um, supplements. Yes. So yeah, they always been working for me. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, well, the system is an absolute treat. And um, another thing I've just really noticed is how, like it's silent. You don't hear a thing. It's dead silent. <laughs> Sometimes you hear the schema. Okay. But it's probably a little snail attached. I know sure, already. Sure. But yeah, wave makers, <laughs> You're in tune to the everything. Noise. <laughs> we got the fan on top to get the evaporation out. I'm yes. running the motor behind that is the garage. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Beautifully designed system and the results speak for themselves. So 
well done on an incredible system over the six <laughs> years here. You've done a fantastic job and wow. no doubt inspired heaps of reefers out there, but also for your local customers, um, whether they be residential customers or luckily enough, some businesses that uh, yeah. are, are able to attract your services and building something like this and uh, what a way to showcase your business with it with a tank like this um simply spectacular so thank you so much thank you again for making <laughs> it possible i know we're about to jump in the car and head down to your shop because there's even more to see there and i can't <laughs> wait to um, share that video with everyone but um just to wrap things up here yeah thanks again for making it possible i really really do appreciate coming here and um i can't wait to see where the tank is in the next two years, I mean, how far it's gone in the last two years is blowing my mind. I, I can't imagine where we're going to be in another couple of years. So. No, I always planning to add more and more and more, but what I said is no, no much time, but yes. it's not finished yet. So, <laughs> well, okay. I, mean, you, I mean, you don't really need to add more. You've got a <laughs> system here that you're at the stage now where um, every reefer aspires to be, where you're just, you're just maintaining, as you say, you're just stopping the digi from taking over things. Yep. Keep the zoas back. Uh, if you find a bit of your blue stags being knocked off, either take it to the shop or stick it in another <laughs> spot. Just the, uh, yeah. the absolute cruise control stage of reefing, which, like I said, we all aspire to be at. So well done. Thank you again. And um, I look forward to seeing the tank in another couple of years. Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys, there you have it. That was Al's custom reef tank and what a stunner it is. I've got to say some of the size of those fish in that system is incredible and it gives the whole system this huge, huge presence. I particularly love the peninsula style or the room divider setup of the tank with all that custom cabinetry around it. It just absolutely seals off those two rooms and gives you this beautiful view, which is completely unique from both sides of the tank. And um, some of the corals, the colors, the top down footage of things like that strawberry shortcake, which I know is one of Al's absolute favorites, come up an absolute treat. And I know I love the word absolute, but I cannot think of a better way to describe that shortcake because it is a simply stunning SBS. Now, I did touch on at the start of the video that next weekend, I'm gonna continue on with the theme of Al. We're gonna go visit his store, the store he owns, the store he runs, check out some things there because he's made some big changes since I was last there, including a brand new display tank, which um, if you've been there before, he's had that display tank running for a very, very long time. So to see the old Red Sea Max tank come in and something new and special goal in is going to be a sight to see. So um, I guess I'll see you next weekend for that footage. But if you do have any questions, comments, or feedback, don't be shy to pop them in the comment section below because I do personally reply to each and every comment there. And if I don't know the answer, I will reach out to Al to find out the answer for you. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're yet to join, please consider hitting that subscribe button in the bottom corner down there. It takes two seconds of your time, costs no money whatsoever, and we'll soldier on towards 28,000 subscribers. Now, I've got nothing else to say, guys, other than to have a great weekend. Until next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.